AllisonWinePromo.com. This is how you can be an extremist without going to federal prison. For now, I can't promise you that later buying my wines, I can land you in jail. But for now, you can get your extremist altitude wine between six and 9,000 feet from very remote regions of Argentina. Fewer pesticides. The grapes are working very hard for your palate. Under the sun, don't go to the grocery store. Get 50% off my favorite Malbecs and 50% off shipping. It's a great way to support the work. They never tell me who I can talk to, or what I can say, or anything like that. And if you're already a wine drinker, you have no excuse. Go get your extremist altitude wine. Be an extremist. Get out of your grandma's basement. Do something with your life. Nobody's ever invited me. I mean, I've never been invited to any of the cool <laughs> kids' parties. I, I mean, I'm not. I, <laughs> Listen, like, you don't want to be on there. Own. I'm like, well, nobody asked me to do anything. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just showing up every night to my you know, living room or bedroom computer just because like no one, nobody wants me at the I party. I always invited you on my shows and invited oh, you. Oh yeah, well on the show, yeah. But like no network has been like, Allison, would you like to have a show with us or anything <laughs> like, like I've never been offered the opportunities that you have. Probably because I look like this and you look like that because I don't do my makeup and I just barely brush my hair and I have garden hands and dirt under my fingernails and everything like that. And I yeah, that's what makes me so great and authentic. And I want to do, I want to be more, I want to be more like Allison, you know, I mean, I don't, have been, yeah, no, don't yeah, like yes, I do. I, cause I've been doing that more. I mean, like I, I just did something on Instagram the other day where I was like makeup half off a wreck. Just, I think that we do need to get back to just being authentic. So sorry that I did my hair and makeup. It's not that great. <laughs> yeah. But you know, no, we, we I, make... Christy, you always look very pretty. It was making me think like, okay, maybe I, cause back in the day I used to try to be a little bit more professionally attired, but now I'm just, I, I as soon as my kids are just a little older, I will tell you this, like, yeah, being a mom of a three, almost four year old and a one, almost two year old. This is a hard age. I, it's, I thought I had motherhood down. It's so hard, but, 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 you know, just own that I'm inspired by you that, you know, sometimes I give myself obstacles like, oh, I can't hop on and, and give this, this message or this news that I want to give because I need like the hour to get ready. And, yeah, and you, you're in your it. Like, I created a barrier for myself. Like, no, I need to be more like Allison and just be like, you know what? I, this yeah. information is important. Screw the hour or whatever it takes for me to get ready and just. Yeah. 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 I yeah. I threw all that stuff out the window a long time ago. Well, I tell people all the time that I noticed in my newsroom if you, and actually this is in uh, one of Shakespeare's plays, I think Henry the fourth, there's a monologue where he's talking, I think it's the prince is talking about, he, he was like the delinquent prince, but he's going to become king someday. But everybody's like, how's this guy going to be king? Because he's such a rebel. He doesn't, he doesn't act like a king. And he's like, he basically says that if the sun were out all the time, everybody would take it for granted. But because it goes away for a certain amount of time at night, we appreciate the sun. And just like that, he's being an a-hole and he's going to rise to the king, the king's leadership someday. And then everyone will go, that's awesome. Instead of being good his whole life, in which case they would totally take it for granted. That was his argument. And in newsrooms, I used to think it was funny because like there would be the anchors, for instance, that always were very done up when they walked into the newsroom. But like there were every once in a while, they were were just running late or whatever and they'd walk in with no makeup and people were like wow did you see that person today because it was like such a huge difference and I was the opposite I always came in like in my workout clothes I sometimes I had to shower it you know in the locker rooms and stuff and I looked terrible and uh, I rarely wore makeup unless it was like right before I went on television and even then I was probably very low done compared but that's what people are used to. So when I did my makeup, they were like, well, you know, Allison, like, or I like wore an outfit that was, you know, not my workout clothes, my running clothes. They were like, Allison's really dressed up today. And, um, and so I was like all about expectations. Um, so anyway, I just, just funny that you bring that up because I've, I've been called into so many newsroom manager offices because of that. And I even had one tell me, that you have to start doing your hair before you come to work. Like you can't come to work anymore like this. You have to start doing your hair. And I said that, uh, well, I asked her, I was like, okay, is that because my hair is part of my job? It's like, it's in my contract. And she said, yes, it's it. Exactly. It's in your contract. You have to do your hair and makeup. And I said, okay, like, it's so important to my job that it's just like my camera and microphones and tripods and everything else. Right. It's like part of my equipment. She's like, yes, exactly. Exactly. And I go, so I'm working when I'm using it because it's part of my equipment. So you got to pay me when I'm touching my hair because you just told me that it's part of my gear. That's such a great point. She 100%. was silent. 
Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But then she told me when I was a muckety muck in New York, I could use that excuse, but I can't use it here, but I never got called in again. And you know what? The job was like, you know, but he, yeah, he goes, when you, you know, you can do this and make in Georgia, but you're not going to get away with this when you go to the, your next larger market. And here I am, Allison Morrow on her own, running her own business. And I'm still doing it, Perry. So yeah. take that. <laughs> there, Allison, that's like a whole nother freaking podcast. We should do sometime like a fun one because you should hear the conversations I've had to have about my hair, my makeup, my clothes. I mean, my gosh, really? like people don't even realize like how invasive, and I don't know if it honestly, oh, yeah. is it still that way? But like I've had, um, because I would had evening anchor positions was like the, the lead face or whatever. I've had literal consultants in my, in my home, in my closet yeah. telling me what I can and cannot wear. Oh, yeah, I had one consultant to- tell me that I couldn't wear a certain pair of shoes because they, it made my, um, legs look chunky. Like, yep. like that's very common. Freaking now, insane. you know what? To that point, talking about not getting invited to the parties and stuff, I may have to clip this last piece and like <laughs> upload it to the sites because this is supporters only. But I feel like people could benefit from hearing this conversation. I'll, I'll call it something like "Why I Never Do My Makeup," um, and we'll see if people click on it. But, but um, to that point, when you were saying like, you know, I should have stayed done it independent, like Allison, the whole time, and I'm like, well, I never got invited, you know, so <laughs> I'm just doing my own thing. Don't don't give me the credit. Um, when you're talking about consultants, I never got invited to that either. I would be sitting at my desk and, you know, my buddy, Natalie, for instance, she still, she works at CBS now, um, network. And, and I remember her getting taken off by these consultants. They would go shopping. She had to pay for it, which I always thought was ridiculous that she had to pay for like this thing. And I remember she came back with a mink, uh, Hat. she was going to the inauguration and it was like a real rabbit hat or a mink hat or something like that. And, I told her about factory farmed animal fur and all this stuff. She would have returned it. It was really funny. And I got in trouble. I got called into my news director's office as I was told I wasn't allowed to criticize. They would never invite me to the consultant shopping trips. I never had anybody come to my house. I never had anybody tell me how to do my makeup. And my, my guess is that they just thought I was past help. Like they just couldn't. (laughs) help me. And so they just never invited me. So a lot of my friends have had those experiences, but I never did because why? I don't know. They just, they just thought I was beyond repair. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know why, but I never had those people. Yeah. No, they're crazy. You didn't miss much. And you know, you're just so naturally beautiful that they didn't, Uh, they they didn't need to give you any advice. (laughs) You know, I don't think it was that, but I do think it helped at the end when I was a wildlife reporter, because I was also able to sell them one, somebody told me once I should have been a lawyer. Cause I, I will say this, I am good on, on the fly when it comes to arguing, my husband will tell you that, uh, I am <laughs> very good at shutting down, um, uh, conversations with, uh, wordsmithing, but, um, yeah, I think being an environmental reporter one time, for instance, like I was wearing a flannel shirt, like black and red flannel shirt and Converse's as shoes and red, red converses. And my question to them was, I went up to my producer and I said, is it a full body shot in the studio? Because I'm wearing my, my chucks today. And I don't know, if, I don't know what you think about that, but I'm wearing these. And she goes, that's fine. But the red flannel, like you should wear a jacket. And I was like, Oh no, I wasn't here asking you about the red flannel. That's, <laughs> that's not that. debatable. I'm wearing the red flannel. I've worn it in studio many times before. If you don't know, I'm an environmental reporter. I go out into the field with wildlife. This is part of my look, leave me alone. And so she was like, Oh, okay. Cause I was like, I wasn't asking your opinion about the red flannel. I was asking about the red sneakers. I wanted to know about the sneakers. That was my only question. So now that you said the sneakers are fine, then that means my whole attire is fine. Cause I'm definitely still wearing the red flannel. But anyway, those were the conversations I used to have with my man. Oh my gosh. I love that. It so was funny. Awesome. Yeah. Brisbane here is like no cankles in the newsroom. <laughs> anyway. I know. All right. <laughs> Christy, thanks again for taking the time to explain all this stuff. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to go support her at uh Christy Lee TV on Twitter and uh Christy Lee TV on locals. Don't forget the um, sponsors. HeliRx, you get 20% off promo code Allison. Here's how they're different than a lot of the medical freedom pharmacies that have arisen over the last few years. You do not have to have a doctor's appointment. You don't have to have a prescription. You don't have to upload any medical data. You have medical privacy, really. You're just consenting to understanding what the drug is for 
and you're an adult, so you can choose. You want it? Great. You don't want it? You don't have to take it. I got an EpiPen for 50% off what my pharmacy wants. It's a uh, direct consumer, so that's how they keep their prices down. Go check them out, tellyrx.com, 20% off a of promo code Allison, and thanks to them for helping me out with the show.